Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel, and I'm your business development and tech expert. Ba bam! I hope you had a great weekend, holiday weekend for a lot of you. Um, feel free to pop into the comments, tell me where you are tuning in from. If this is your first time watching, say hello. Don't be shy. Like, we have a great community around here. I'm going to pop two things into the comments for you guys uh, for you to take care of later if you want. Uh, one is my Hey Ed membership. So, basically, for those who are new, I created this uh, membership community called Hey Ed because most of you will ask questions, simple questions, and it usually starts with Hey Ed, do you know XYZ? Hey Ed, can you point me in the right direction for XYZ? And things like that. So I created this community called Hey Ed that's super low rate right now. Hey Paula, welcome. Um, and it is for all of you guys who are like, you know, you need a little bit of guidance here and there, um, but you also aren't wanting to, you know, shell out a ton of money for a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's with me or somebody else. Um, and so I created this community. So it's a place where you can search for things on your own, kind of like going to a library. You have your archives with private um, trainings as well as public ones. You also have um, forums, which have are basically like different rooms inside the library. And then I also have um, a private Facebook group for all of us to practice and enjoy uh, each other's company and collaborate. So it's really cool. You guys, I, I was so impressed on Friday. I have to share this one story real quick with you. Um, on Friday, I had one of my uh, members. Hey, Jess. Um, I know the lighting, right? Uh, I had one of my members uh, from Hey Ed show up live in the group for the very first time, first time she ever went live, and it just blew me, as you can see, I'm still so excited. It blew me away, though, and I was so, so honored to be, um, to be the one that she felt safe in that environment and be able to share that with us, and she's only going to grow from there, and she did a great job. So um, shout-outs to, to one of our Hey Ed members, I appreciate you, and I'm so glad that you guys, uh, that you were able to do it in our space. So anyway, that was the first one. Take a look. Even if you're not interested, share it with a friend, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, or just text them or email them, because I know there are people out there that are looking for um, that extra support, and this is a great way to do that, uh, just on a, hey, I have a quick question type basis, and let's be honest, it's super cheap for a whole month versus a one-on-one -on -one session. So anyway, there's that. And then also I put the training link for uh, Wednesday's uh, live paid training. It's not going to be on the show here. But if you're a Hey Ed member, you do get a discount on that training as well. So there's bonus points for becoming a Hey Ed member. Anyway, those are the two promos that I'm just going to share with you guys. And we're going to talk about today's content. So uh, really today's show. Uh, so... Before we jump into today's content, which is going to be talking about how you can build your credibility online, for those of you especially who maybe don't have uh, a whole lot established online, um, and if you do, this will still help as well. It's, it's going to give you some insight. So we'll talk about that. Um, have fun, Jess, at Grandma's. Tell her we said I. Be like, the Ed Talk TV show and his crew said hello. Um, so... Also, if you are joining us live, definitely comment, not only for um, your sake, my sake, but everyone's sake. Because if you join live, I can actually put your comments on the screen. And if you're watching the replay, you still want to comment because that's where the magic happens. Fun fact, when you comment, it actually will show up on Google in a search. So if you ever search your name later, you chances are you'll see on the page two or three at some point um, that you show up from my blog on Google. So, hey, it's bonus points for you. So I'm trying to help you out. That's all you got to do. So there it is. Um, before we get into today's content, though, I do want to go over random news um, because uh, Snapchat, hey, Vicky, um, Snapchat has come out with something. It's very interesting. How many of you guys know, even if you're watching the replay, how many of you guys know of Snapchat? You can give me a hand emoji. You can say yes. You can say no. Um, that's the first question. Second follow-up question to that is, how many of you guys are using Snapchat? Now, when I say using, it could mean you're just testing it every so often. You're going on it, checking it, and that's it. Or it can mean that you're literally snapping your whole day all day long. Um, I will say for me, it is, it, it's more, more like I'm checking it. Um, I'm not so much using it. 
Uh, Vicky says she doesn't use it. Okay, Vicky, nice, good. Um, for me, I, I have Snapchat and I do use some of the filters, if you will. Um, those are fun to share with people, but I don't have a whole lot of people that I actually snap with on Snapchat. Most of the time what I do is I just snap on Snapchat, save it to my device, and then go share it on a Facebook post or in a iMessage or whatever um, for that. Paula, I have a young adult daughter who uh, lives by it, so I don't use it. Yep. And Paula, uh, how old? Teenage, I'm guessing. I'm thinking teenager um, because Snapchat is very popular among teenagers. Um, not so much above those of us who are over 25. Hey, Tammy. Instagram girl. Yeah, I'm not sure what the difference is. Hey, good, good point, Tammy. Good point. Um, so uh, let's talk about, well, maybe I should show you this first and then we should talk about that because it will lead into what we're talking about today. Yeah, see, Paula, 19. Okay, Vicky says 15-year-old daughter uses it. Yeah, see, see, all the kids are up on that technology. They're like, these these older adults, myself included, um, those who are over 25, I just don't get it. They just don't understand, right? Like that's what the teens are thinking. So that's why they love Snapchat because they're like, my mom and dad can't follow me. They don't even know how to snap. They don't even know what a snap is besides the, oh, snap, like if they're lucky, right? So you have to, you have to understand that part. So let me show you this ad first and then we can dive into a little bit more uh, talking about um, the difference between that and like Instagram, because that's a great point, Tammy. And then that will lead us into today's content, uh, main topic. We need to get it down with the kids. Yeah, <laughs> we do. We do. So let me go ahead and plug, unplug, and I'm going to switch my screen over because Snapchat, so before I show you this, Snapchat did something that they haven't done before. This is the first time they've ever done a 60 second TV ad. That's big. That's really big. Now I'd be curious to know how much they actually paid for this ad because it's TV. So TV ads are very expensive and it's kind of interesting that they're doing it now and that they haven't done it in the past because they've kind of been in trouble for a while. Right. Um, and to know that I just got the gram on. <laughs> yes, exactly. Paula. Um, so, Let's take a look at this 60 second ad that Snapchat had posted for uh, the Final Four TV spot, which I'm sure was a fortune. I can only imagine. And I wanna hear what you think about this ad, even if you're watching the replay. So let me go ahead and switch my screen over and we're gonna do that. And let me go ahead and play this ad for you and you tell me what you think. Snapchat is a camera. No, not that kind of camera. It's this kind of camera. It's a camera that adds magic to your yard. It makes early mornings a little more fun. It brings your best friend with you. Anywhere you go. And comes with your very own mini-me. It's a camera with a map so you can travel the world on your morning commute. It can lead to adventure and help get you there. It's a camera for talking because a snap says more than a text. So yeah, Snapchat is a camera where how you feel matters more than how you look. So what do you guys think about that ad? What what stood out from that ad? Um, there's a there's a few things that I kind of want to pull out from there, but tell me, what are your thoughts? Even if you're watching the replay, what are your thoughts on that ad? Because that's the first time Snapchat has ever uh, ran a TV ad, and it was actually during the Final Four TV spot, um, which I can only imagine is super expensive. But that 60-second ad, how does that make you feel? What 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 do you uh, think of when you're when you're watching that? And I can share the link again later in the comments so you guys can have it to rewatch to kind of follow up on. But the reason I'm showing you that is not only because it's Snapchat, but because I want to talk about that ad. Because you know when I um, stickers faces silly, yeah, Tammy, exactly. Um, when I was in college, because I don't know if most of you may or may not know this, depending on if you read my about page or not. Um, but I have a bachelor's in communications, so. Back in college when we were studying advertising and marketing and all these things, um, 
this is the type of stuff that we would watch. We would watch an ad and then we would pick it apart. We would try to figure out like what, what was there, why it was there, all of that. Uh, Paula says, pretty good ad. It appeals to a broader audience and not just to teens. Bam! There you go, Paula. See? Paula, Paula was in that advertising class, I can tell. <laughs> um, exactly. So when you're watching that ad, we, the consumer, think of Snapchat as just a teeny bopper thing, right? We, we feel like the Snapchat's all about the teens. Even though we're trying to get on it, it's all about the teens uh, from there. And, um, hey, Sarah, I think I finally know what Snapchat is now. So, oh, <laughs> Siri came on. Um, so, yeah, exactly. See, Sarah, um, that ad right there gives you a pretty good idea of what Snapchat is. Because up until this point, it's kind of been, it's almost been like a secret, right? When, when you think about Snapchat, you, you have to know someone who's in on the group that has been in there to play around. It's like you have to know someone who knows someone to teach you. Um, it's one of those interesting apps. It's not like Facebook. It's not like Instagram where you can kind of figure it out on your own. I mean, you sort of can, but we're, it's so, it's almost so different compared to the other social media platforms that we as adults are like, ah, I don't have time for that. I'm not trying to figure that all out. Like, give me something easy, right? Um, Paula says, yep, my associate's degree in advertising design. See, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, so when you, when you look at these ads, you have to think about them a little, a little bit more, um, go in depth a little bit more, go a little bit deeper when you're looking at them. So Snapchat up until this point hasn't really publicized itself. I mean, it's been in the news, but it hasn't really shown audiences what it's capable of doing. It hasn't done anything like that ad almost feels like an Apple commercial to me. Um, maybe a Samsung one. I think Samsung's done some similar ads. So it's now starting to branch out and get into the public eye. Let me plug my headphones back in so it's a little clear audio. Um, so they're branching out and they're getting into the public eye now so that it's not just about the teens. As Paula pointed out and as we saw, it's all different types of people, right? Different sh uh, sizes, shapes, and um, ages, all within that 60 second spot, which is smart. They're trying to broaden their horizons, if that makes sense. They're trying to open it up more, so it's not just about the teens. They're trying to show you what it's capable of doing, and how much fun, and how silly you can be. And towards the end, did you hear that little quote? I, I can't think of the exact words, but he was saying, uh, or they were saying that it's, it's basically a place where you, you don't have to be all perfect and cleaned up. So that kind of ties into Instagram stories, if you are familiar with that, or Facebook stories. I mean, they basically took that from Snapchat, if you didn't know that. So, so those types of things, if you're starting to use those, that's where you can pull in Snapchat. Now, the, well, there's lots of things that are different with Snapchat. Um, and again, I, I'm not a pro by any means, but, I'll point out a couple things. When you think about Facebook stories, Instagram stories, and Snapchat, the idea is similar when you're starting out. The camera opens, you can take a picture, or you can take a video, you can add a filter, and, and be goofy or fil uh, filter faces and stuff to like make it look different. So there, there's that. That's the common link between the three. Where Snapchat becomes a little different is that it... That is the app, like that's the entire app and, and you have your contacts and you can call them and you can text them and, and things disappear. Um, so it, it's a little bit more involved in that sense. And then there's the discovery tab where you can basically see other people's and, and things like that. So there's a lot more going on there. But when you think of all three of them, Facebook stories, Instagram stories, uh, Snapchat, they all do the same thing for the most part in terms of taking a picture, adding a filter, and posting. So so those like, if you know one of those three platforms and you've tested one of those, then you know how to do it on the other two um, because that's the basics. Of course, there's more to it and stuff, but those are the basics. Um, what's different, a really big difference for Snapchat, which is gonna be kind of hard when we talk about today's topic in terms of um, establishing your credibility online when you don't have one yet, um, when it comes to Snapchat, 
you're, you're basically solo, you know, like this is your own private party. So I'll use me as an example, right? Like Ed's party's over here, but in order to come over and hang out, you got to know who Ed is at least and get the invite to come over. Right. Because it's not like Facebook or Instagram where you can just like search real quickly. I mean, there is a search there, but it's not the same. And it's not like saying, oh, well, you're friends with Paula and you're friends with Tammy. So you should be checking out, you know, uh, Vicky and, and stuff. It's not doing that. So it's more of an exclusive party, if you will. Uh, Mindy says, yeah, I tried Snapchat, but none of my friends were on. <laughs> and then that's the other thing, right? When when we figure out Snapchat, we're like, cool, like I'm on Snapchat. I got this. I'm going to be snapping my party. I'm going to be sending this. Oh, there's nobody to send to because my friends aren't cool enough to be on Snapchat. Now I got to go teach them. And it's a lot of work, right? Because you're thinking, okay, if I can figure it out, cool, we'll start with that. Then you get on and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. This is, this is awesome. And then you realize you don't have any friends on there. So then it's like, well, why even bother? Because now you're trying to convert all these other people over. So it, it is a little bit uh, of, a, of a challenge, if you will. Um, that's not to say don't use it and don't try it. But it's just one of those things to realize like what the different platforms do for you and how how you can utilize them. And maybe you won't utilize all of them, and that's fine. But it's good to be aware of the different ones. And like I said, if you're trying it on Snapchat, or sorry, if you're trying it on Facebook stories or Instagram stories, it's very similar for Snapchat. Now you're probably saying, well, if I'm already doing it on those two platforms and I have my audience there, why the heck would I go to Snapchat where I have nobody and try to figure that out and then try to build my audience there? It's a great question. And it's one that I can't specifically answer for you um, because you're going to have to see what your audience is wanting. Where are they? Ask them, are they on Snapchat? And then if they are, then you make that connection, right? Hey, Chrissy, welcome back. Um, so make that connection. You know, um, if, if they're not on Snapchat, you can do like I just asked you guys. Ask them, are you on Snapchat? Yes or no? And if, if not, is there a specific reason? Chances are they'll tell you, I just didn't want to learn another platform, you know, um, but at least you're, you're starting that conversation, right? You're, you're having them join in on your conversation. A lot of you guys have Facebook groups or a part of them. Go ask, see what's going on. Be like, Hey, is anybody on Snapchat? Any tips on Snapchat? I'm thinking about trying Snapchat. Like all of those things, um, will work. And the reason why you want to do that is because it, it helps you practice asking and listening. All of this is tying into today's content, so make sure you're paying attention and don't forget to share. Um, hey, Whitney, look at we got everyone joining us on a Monday. Getting so excited. Um, so when you think about that, you have to understand like those three platforms with the stories built in um, are going to be very similar to each other. It's just who's on those platforms and, and kind of why and um, how comfortable can you get with them. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I use Snapchat just basically for my own personal uh, preference for just sharing outside of the app, meaning I will take a snap inside of Snapchat, save it, share it in an iMessage to friends who don't check their Snapchat. Like there's a couple friends of mine who I got on Snapchat and they're like, cool, we're on there. But they don't, we don't message each other on Snapchat. It's really weird. We typically will message through iMessage. It just, that's how it works. It, that's how it works. But we'll go into Snapchat and make that. So we do a little extra work. I know it's weird. Um, but you know, you go where it's comfortable and you just do it. Um, so think about that. And, and when you watch that ad, for those just joining, by the way, we, we watched a TV spot, um, Snapchat. This is what started the whole thing. I'll put it in the comments for later. Um, snap, I just want to make sure I spell everything, Snapchat TV ad. So for those who just joined, real quick recap. The reason we're talking about Snapchat, it's part of our random news. I just shared the link. Don't go there now. Go there later uh, of the TV spot that they did at the Final Four. It's the first time they've ever done a 60-second um, TV spot. Shows you basically uh, a different view of Snapchat. It kind of teaches you what it can do and opens up the door of possibilities. Um, and then, of course, for those who are brand new, at the beginning, I posted two links. Hey, Ed, membership and, to find out more and the training coming up on Wednesday for the How to Start a Magazine. 
So those are in the comments. You can check those later. Not now. Uh, Mindy says, I have friends who communicate with their teen kids in Snapchat. Smart. That is smart. Utilizing the technology that they're paying attention to. Um, to here, so here's a fun fact. Um, <clears throat> Well, I guess I, I guess I can share it with you guys. So uh, a fun fact is that um, I had thought about running uh, some kind of like, not challenge, but kind of a, a, a test, beta test group through Snapchat. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I thought it would be fun to communicate um, through there for um, my teens that I mentor. So I haven't tried it out yet. We'll see if I, if I get around to that, um, but it's just something that you wanna think about um, for what you're doing, right? So Snapchat may not be the main social media network that you use, but it may be a nice complement for certain things um, that you wanna do. Now, why are we talking all about this? Like, what? why, besides the fact that it was the first TV spot, um, I've been reading this little book called Crushing It from uh, Gary Vee. We'll, we'll get that, see if uh, Facebook can get a nice little screenshot there. Um, but I've been reading this uh, book, Crushing It, which it's fantastic. It's so good. This is the library book, but I'm actually buying it on Amazon because I haven't finished reading it. I'm on page like 113 and there's like over 250 pages and I need to return the book by tomorrow. But I've taken so long because I literally, you guys, I, I, I analyze everything when I read books like this. Like I just go through and analyze it. Exactly, Tammy, crushing it. We're just gonna crush it. Um, and, and I love these types of books. Like before when I was a kid, you guys, I, reading a book would take me forever. I'd fall asleep. You'd be lucky, before I started my business, you'd be lucky if I had uh, probably 10 books I could count on my hand that I read all my life. Like literally, magazines, no problem. Books, forget it. Um, so now, after starting my business, three year, three plus years later, um, I, I've been turning books over and over and over, like boom, 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 boom. That's part of why I, that's a big part of why I come to you guys almost basically daily here to share knowledge for, for free and to help you guys grow. And then that's a big part of why I constantly post on my social media um, channels different tidbits of knowledge of what I'm learning. And that's where I can go a little deeper in with my um, community for Hey Ed. So, you know, that's the thing. You got to think about all these things and understand like when you're posting things, it, it's not just to grab attention. I mean, that's why we post is obviously we want people to get their attention and to be able to um, hopefully get new customers and, and new um, people into our community, right? That someday will be um, guest speakers or guest bloggers or, or um, customers. But it's, it's more than that. Like we have to think about what, what value are we providing in our posts? Because remember, it's not about how many posts can we share a day. That was, that was old. I mean, it was never really a thing, but like social media platforms wanted you to do that and they wanted you to post constantly, Facebook, um, throughout the day to really keep things going. Kind of like Twitter, right? Twitter's a conversation, so it's like boom, 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 boom all day long. Facebook's not that way. And a lot of us here are on Facebook and we have most of our businesses here on Facebook. So we have to realize that there there's a way to... Um, communicate in a way to post, but we have to do that carefully with the newsfeed algorithm changes. Um, that's where, that's where stories comes into play and going live come into play. So we'll kind of talk about that here in a, here in a minute. But, um, you know, again, for those who are new, like my whole thing is I help you show up, deliver and engage. And that's why I encourage you to comment because that's, that's going to help you in those areas. Um, so anyway, reading, uh, crushing it. It's, it's a fantastic book. If you haven't got it yet already, you should definitely go get it. That I'm not an affiliate for them at, for uh, Gary at all. Um, it's just really, really good. And we're going to talk about some examples here of, um, how you can build your credibility online. Now, when it comes to being able to crush it and, and be able to show up, how many of you guys are right now, how many of you guys are going live? I don't care if it's Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, whatever other platform, how many of you are going live at least once a week? We'll just say once a week. 
It could be more, it could be less, I don't care. Um, but how do you go less than once a week? I guess zero. <laughs> um, but how many of you guys are going live at least once a week on some kind of platform? I'm gonna have a sip of water for those who are new because you have to hydrate while you're going live, especially for an hour. As most of you know, I go live here on the page five days a week for the most part. Um, and that's just in my, just, that's just on my page. That doesn't count how I go live in the Hey Ed community or, um, trying to think what other ones, I think there's a couple other ones I go live too. Uh, oh yeah, uh, for, uh, clients too. I'll go live for them, um, build, helping them build their pages and, and share their content. Um, yes, mostly. Yes, I am. Okay, cool. Perfect. We got Chrissy. We got Vicky. Uh, most weeks, but not a consistent day yet. No problem, Mindy. So Mindy brings up a great point. I love it. Thank you. Um, she's going most weeks, but not consistent days yet. That is okay because you're testing. Remember guys, like I may be consistent right now, which has been awesome and it has helped. I will say the more consistent you are, the better. But especially when starting out and you know, there's going to be times where you're going to have to, you're going to have to switch it up a bit. Like I've thought about this too, where I might be pivoting soon. I might be changing up the time. I might be um, going maybe a couple days a week instead of five days a week um, because I have other ideas that I want to implement. Um, so you always want to be testing. And especially at the beginning, you want to kind of feel it out to see, you know, what's working for you or not. Um, for instance, uh, over the weekend. So Friday, I didn't do a live show during our normal time. I did one in the morning after finishing a meeting with a, a student that I mentor at the high school. Um, we talked about business and, and her a senior project. She, I've been helping her and a few others with social media and learning about business and, you know, online stuff. Um, so I was so pumped after that uh, meeting that I decided, you know what, I want to go live right now on the page and I'm just going to do this. And then if I go live later, cool, but I want to get this one out. So I did, and it was great because it was like, I want to say it was like 10 o'clock in the morning or something, and um, and I had new viewers that can't catch this episode, um, this time frame, so they showed up, they carried on their conversation. I had a friend who was in, I think, Brazil, who got to show her husband um, what I'm all about and how I might be able to help him with his business stuff. Like, it was just super cool to have um, a variety of people show up, and it was just a different timing. And then I think I went live again this weekend, which normally I don't go live on the page over the weekend, um, but I think I did uh, randomly for something, and it was good. So, you know, you kind of have to switch it up and play around. There's no, listen, there is no right or wrong answer to going live on your page during a specific day or time. It's, there's not. What you need to do is just test. You, you just have to do it. Let's, let's get that one out of the way. You just have to do it. And then from there, test to see what works. Um, ask questions, filter out your audience. See, you're not going to get everyone live all the time. We already know that, right? I'm lucky that I have nine people at this moment here live and that chances are most of them will stay for the whole broadcast. I mean, it blows my mind every single day. You guys are amazing and I appreciate you and I love you guys. Um, but remember that, that that's taken a lot of time and, and I've built up my credibility before even going live with this show. I will say this live has helped. This show has helped tremendously for me personally and professionally for my business. But keep in mind, just like overnight successes, right? It's been 10 plus years in the making. I've built my credibility by working with entrepreneurs, small business owners, nonprofits, both online and offline at previous jobs and in my own business now. And I've taken that conversation and I've carried it on because I'm about the relationships, not about the sale, right? When you, when you, Think about it. Don't be about the sale today. Be about building those relationships over time because that carries with you. And then from there, that's how your credibility builds. And so for those of you who are like maybe just starting out and you're like, well, I don't really have any credibility right now. Um, I know that I'm good and, and I know some stuff, but how do I get, how do I get noticed? Ed? like, how do I get out there? Go live. If you're not ready to go live yet, you better be jumping into those comments you better say hello. You better show up and deliver some valuable 
um, content. Um, Chrissy says it does take time. Yeah, it does. Um, you guys, before I even got comfortable with going live, this, okay, this goes back to almost the beginning and this starts with Periscope for those who remember Periscope. It's still around, but you know, most people are on Facebook live right now. When Periscope first came out, you guys, I tried it a couple times and I was like, oh, because I'm all about technology and testing things and figuring it out. But I, I just, I could not handle seeing myself on camera. I could not listen. I was just like, no, that was bad. I say like so many times. I say right. Oh, it kills me. Blah. I don't care anymore. But at the beginning, I did a lot. And um, so what I did was, since I couldn't show up live because I was holding myself back, I engaged like crazy in the comments on other people's lives. Like crazy. And no, I was not saying, hey, I'm Ed, come buy from me. Hey, I'm Ed, I can help you come over to my website. Hey, I'm Ed, come on over and like my page. No, I was not saying that. Because you don't say that when you're on other people's lives. And, and really, you shouldn't have to say that when you're providing value. When you show up, deliver, and engage, that's all you need to do. Everything else is extra. So you have to realize, like, when I was on these different um, periscopes, watching people and engaging, I wasn't just engaging with the host of the show. I was engaging with the audience, like I do with Chrissy, like I do with Vicky, Mindy, um, Sarah, you know, all of you guys, Tammy, like, I'm engaging with you, and I'd be in the comments literally like this, boom, 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 like on fire, not worried about, hey, I'm Ed, come on and hang out with me. Don't, don't worry about these guys. Come hang out with me. No, we don't do that. You show up, you deliver, and you engage, and you provide value. You join that conversation, and then people start recognizing you. It takes time. Like Chrissy said, it takes a lot of time. You have to be in it for the long run, which, by the way, is um, point number two I was going to cover. We'll get to number one here if if, if you haven't um, put the pieces together. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But the, the main point is that it takes time. You have to be ready to invest the time. There is no quick fix here. Um, if you want a quick fix, the only quick fix is to just go live. Like that, that's really what it's going to be about. Um, Sarah has, I have a Facebook business page, but I have no followers yet. Would going live still work? Yes. Yes, Sarah. Thank you for saying that. Um, how would people see it? Oh, so good. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is what I'm talking about. Who has an answer for uh, Sarah in the comments? Because I have an answer. We, we definitely have an answer, but this is a perfect one. Thank you for asking that question too, because that's a big one. So, I'm telling you to go live, right? Because it's going to change everything for you. And I, I've told you, like, you have to comment what you're doing right now. All of you guys are. Even if you're watching the replay, you better jump into those comments because that's the starting point is commenting and then sharing this broadcast and then going out and having those conversations. And now you're probably thinking, like, well, Ed, you just said share this broadcast, which is kind of a why. How would that help me, the viewer right now? Because when you share something. You're sharing it to your audience, which now creates a conversation piece, right? You're going to have someone on your newsfeed look up and be like, oh, I haven't seen this guy before. So why, why is Sarah sharing this broadcast? Why is Tammy talking about this broadcast? Let, let me watch this and see. And then they start to see, oh, this guy's not bad. I don't know him, but he's not bad. He's got a couple good points. Maybe I'll go check him out. Oh. I like his page, not literally like, but you know, like the content. And then it just keeps going from there. So that's what I mean by, by sharing. Um, and Tammy says, replay and share it. Yes, exactly. Uh, Sarah will get seen. Exactly. Vicky says, yes. So Sarah, to answer your question, because of the business page, and a lot of people are in the same boat, by the way. Um, you guys will see actually on my business page, I, ha I actually have a really decent following. When you look, when you look at a page, there's the number of likes and then there's the number of following. I don't really care about the likes. Uh, I mean, I do, but I don't because that doesn't really mean anything. But when you follow a page, that for me holds more power because that means that you're actually going to see my post um, or chances of you seeing my post are more than if you just like it. So I care more about that number. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I don't really care about the numbers. I care about the engagement. Um, so for me, um, 
you'll see that the page has a decent amount of, of people following it. And for those who are just starting out or have had a page but really haven't paid any attention to it, you may be like, well, I don't have any followers or my page is pretty dead. Like, how do I step it up? Well, you have to have a plan. You have to think about it and think, what is it that people are coming to you for? Or what should they be coming to you for? And then how are you going to deliver that? And what I tell my clients is the same thing I'm going to tell you. You have to go live when it's Facebook. If it's a Facebook business page, you have to go live. If you want to start getting that engagement going, it has to be alive. Not because I said it has to be, but because Facebook is favoring that over any other type of post. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Hey, Anna, welcome. Um, so you have to think about all of that. Chrissy says, my friends that aren't following Ed see it as I'm viewing the live. Exactly. When you share a broadcast, that's what happens. And then people get to know you. I've met so many of Chrissy's friends, like Vicky and more, um, because she's, they've shared my broadcast. They, they've actually invited me into their world. They've also invited me into their, uh, their group on Facebook, you know, that's how the conversation um, gets started and that that's how you get exposure. Um, and so going back to Sarah's question there, Sarah, I want you to go live and tell us what you do. Like, if, if that's your first one, do that. Um, just go in and be like, hey everyone, I am so-and-so and this is my page. I'm so glad you're here. And you just, even if no one follows your page, in your head, think about it. Pretend like you're talking to me, if that if that helps. If you're like, I need to focus on something, pretend like Ed is right there with you. I'm your camera, you know, where you're looking in, and you're looking directly at me, and you're saying, hey, Ed, but don't say my name, you know, because that will mess you up a little bit, but be like, hey, I'm Sarah, I do XYZ, and I'm so glad you're here on my page. On this page, you're going to find XYZ, and I really encourage you to not only like and share my content, but engage. See what I did there? And if you have any questions, feel free to tag me in the comments, or if you want, head over to my website and click on the contact page. And then in the comments, leave a link to the comments, or sorry, to the contact page. See? Not bad, right? So all of you guys watching, even the replay viewers, can see that now you can take that example and run with it. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, and, and I know it's not, it doesn't seem that simple, but it is once you, once you just can get out of your head and understand that you just, you're just talking to somebody. That's all, all it is. And yeah, you'll be nervous and yeah, it may not be perfect. Um, Chrissy, great question. Thank you. Yeah, Sarah, what's your page? Feel free to share your page in the comments. That's okay. Um, and, and let us know, you know, what, what you're doing. Um, see, these are the types of things, that's how it works. When you comment and you speak up, when you ask and you listen, that's what happens. Magic in the comments. Chrissy already wants to know what your page is, right? So as you guys can see, those of you watching, that's how it works. And it almost works instantly all the time. Now, if you're not on my broadcast and you're watching somebody else, then you're thinking, okay, well, how do I, how do I go through and, and kind of like, you know, bring people over. Again, you don't. The only way you bring people over is by showing up consistently on that person's broadcast and engaging by providing value to the host and their audience. You don't say anything about who you are, unless of course they ask or they share how you share it, but you show up over there and you just be like, I am just going to deliver the crap out of this. I'm going to give you all the value I got because people will then read that and they're like, Oh, this, this guy, this girl, she knows what she's talking about, you know, then they get curious and then that's when they click on your profile. That's when they go over and see what you do. So that's what you have to do. And again, you have to get, um, creative with your business page too, right? If you have a business page, uh, and I'm talking to everyone, not just Sarah, this is for everyone. Um, when you have a business page, most of us have had one and maybe haven't used it, utilized it a whole lot because we went straight to groups or we were like, I don't want to deal with it and whatever. Now is the time to get back on that business page bandwagon and start utilizing that more versus what you might have been doing is just posting from your personal profile. One, you're not supposed to do that anyway, but two, Facebook's made it easier now to engage as your page 
on other people's posts. So now you can, as some of you have seen in the comments here um, on previous episodes as well, you can go in and um, say exactly, like you can be your page, like I, my page is Ed Troxel Creative. So I can go over to um, you know Paula's page and post a comment as Ed Troxel Creative, not Ed Troxel. Does that make sense? So that the reason I would do that is because I want people to know who my business page is. That's where I want people to go because that's where I'm sharing the business. That's where I'm sharing the content. They can find me over here later. I want them to find this. So that that's the uh, the idea behind it. Let me catch up on the comments real quick. Um, Sarah, let's see what Sarah is. So yes, I'm a graphic designer. See, see. And if we talk real quick, if we loop back, you guys are getting so much good stuff today. I don't know about you, but I think it's good. Um, if we loop back to our random news about Snapchat and we talk about Instagram stories and Facebook stories, well, I'm going to use Sarah as an example because she, she let us know that she's a graphic designer. Well, where's those behind the scenes photos? Where's those behind the scenes video clips? Snapchat would be a great spot for that. The unedited look, right? Um, Facebook stories would be a good spot. Instagram stories, like whatever platform you're on, you can use that space to do that part. Because remember, the news feed algorithm doesn't favor a whole lot of post, 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 post. It's less is more now on the news feed algorithm, which is great. But then you're like, but I still want to share. Because if you're like me, I love sharing. And I, I have to like tell myself, Ed, don't overshare today. As you can see, I've overshared a lot in here. Um, but hey, Lindsay. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where you, if you still want to share, then you start going into those private stories. Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. You go into there and you start talking. You start sharing those behind the scenes and start building up that a little bit because then that gets it out of your system. Then you can point people there. It, it, there, it just... There's so many options for us now that it's overwhelming, but at the same time, we can kind of um, play around with it and see what works. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Are you ready? You are going to see that different people see you in different places at different times. Now, let me break it down a little bit more. Those of you who follow me here on the business page, and if you're new, if you haven't, if you like what you see, go ahead and follow the page. Uh, but those of you who are here on the page following me, how many of you are actually friends with me on my personal profile? Now that may or not may or may not be a, a thing because I don't like unless I really know you, I'm not really approving a ton of like because there's a lot of spam and stuff uh, for friend re friend requests. So send me a message if if that's the case. But you know, see what I'm saying, like. And I have a lot of people on my personal profile. This is a better example. I have a lot of people on my personal profile who know I share good stuff, who may or may not already like my page, but there's a handful, I'm sure, or not, or more that aren't following my page because they're following just me. Maybe they don't realize that they can follow the page. And then there's a people that will not see my post in the newsfeed, but they sure will see my story because I shared something up there and vice versa. Is that all making sense? Like, there's just so many different options and routes that um, we can go. And sometimes, if you're like me, you feel like you're sharing a lot of the same thing, right? Like, I feel like I talk about the my first business, the magazine. I felt like I talked about that a lot. But people were like, Ed, I didn't even know you had a magazine. Then that's how the training came up. Because people were asking, hey, can you do a training around how to start your own magazine? Okay, let's do it. That's how I created it for this week. Then same thing with um, with the Hey Ed membership group uh, community. I don't really like saying group. I don't know. It's a thing. I like community. Um, with the Hey Ed membership community, that to me, I feel like I talk about it a lot because I'm always thinking about it. I'm always in there. I'm always working with the community. But people, I have to remember that people aren't going to see or hear or watch it all the time. They're, they maybe saw one clip on Instagram in between their break and were like, oh, I, I want to check that out and then totally forgot, right? So then they're going to be on my email list and then see something and be like, oh yeah, I'll save that for later. And then they forget. 
Like on average, I think what is it? Seven times people have to, we have to see something seven times before we actually take action for the most part. So you have to think about that. Um, let me catch up on the comments real quick. Um, Lindsay says, yes, we, I remember you became a reliable viewed, uh, sorry, viewed to certain hosts on Periscope. Yeah. And when they had an issue, they would talk directly to you. Right, Lindsay? See, this comment going, is going back to what I was talking about with Periscope and what I did to grow my credibility is I showed up to other people's broadcasts and I provided value. I supported the host. I supported the, um, the guests and well, the audience members that were commenting because that's what I do. That's what I've always done. Like, we're cool. We're friends. We're meeting. We're hanging out. We're, we're helping each other out. And so people would see that. And you guys, a lot of you guys know, uh, probably know Nicole Walters. Like I was on her broadcast, like every time she got on, like boom, boom, boom. And so people were like, who is this guy, Ed? Homeboy's showing up every five seconds. Like he's everywhere. Super nice. Got a great profile picture. Not bad. But wh who is this guy? And then you go through and, and you realize, you're like, oh, he's not just, he's not promoting himself. He's not trying to be one of these trolls. He's actually showing up and providing value. I like this guy. Let me tap on the profile. Boom. Let me follow him because I have a question for him later. Right? That's how it works. And, and it's proven to do that. So if you don't believe me, you can try it yourself, but that's how it works. Um, cool. Um, yeah, Lindsay, I got that, Ed, not we. <laughs> um, I hadn't even seen this, Ed. Boom. Um, awesome. I can't remember what we, you were specifically talking about there, Tammy, because I already am like 20 steps ahead, but yes. Um, Sarah says it is good. Good. Perfect. Um, Paula, Thanks for the tip because I usually comment from my personal pr page. Yes, see to Paula, that's, that's the thing. And so, um, you guys, when it comes to the, uh, commenting from your personal profile versus your business page, again, it's hit or miss with Facebook depending on the post, but there will be an option if it's available for you to switch who you are. It's very confusing, I know, but there'll be an option with a drop down arrow to switch who you are. And you'll want to get in the habit of switching that to your business page that way, if it's available. So that way you build up that audience. Because again, think about it. You've been a personal profile for so long and you've built up all these friends. And since, you know, you're probably like me where we all are about business. And I mean, that's pretty much my life because I love it and it's, it's my thing. Um, so everyone's like, well, the, I want to be friends with him. Like, he's cool. Like, let's, let's keep watching his feed and everything. So we built that up over the time. But now we have to move over here and build up this thing. And I know it's a lot of work. That's why I said point number two is to be prepared for the long haul. What was point number one? Because we didn't technically say it specifically. Great question. I know you guys were thinking that. Great question. Um, and I'm just quickly going through, uh, Mindy C for getting two. Yep. Uh, you need lots of touch points. Great, uh, point there, uh, Chrissy. Um, and I can't do this on my phone. Yeah. Sometimes you can't do it on the phone. Uh, if you're on desktop, uh, it will be a lot easier for most. Yes. Provide value by typing the, uh, points into the comments for them. Yes, exactly. And you guys, when you, um, want to recap, you know, like Mickey will do that a lot too here. Um, oh, I see Whitney did with the business page. We're going to pop that up here in a second. Um, so, you know, Mickey does it a lot of the times too, where she'll get a good quote out of the broadcast and she'll re, um, add it to the comments for us, which is awesome because then that means that we all can partake in that quote. And then I don't have to go back through and try to listen to where that quote came from. It's like right there and it's just easier. Um, here's an example for Sarah and everyone else. Whitney, this is Whitney's business page. We can tell because it doesn't just say Whitney. It's a lot more information. And then, yep, met you through a Nicole Walters broadcast before I became a rich friend. Yeah. So see, she, she met me on the broadcast. Now I think if I scroll back through the comments, give me a second. I think Whitney had shown up with, so this is Whitney's there, but look, I'm going to show you this same person, personal business, personal business. So for her, it gave her that option. So that's how you can go ahead and jump through there. Um, let me, quickly go back through. Okay. Perfect. Um, perfect. Okay, cool. 
yeah, so that that's how you can do it. And again, it's hit or miss with uh, Facebook. So that's what you're going to think. So, okay, so point number one, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, so point number one is share your world. Invite people in. It doesn't matter what network you're on, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Periscope, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're on, start inviting people in. And we had such a great example um, from Sarah, thank you so much, about your business page. If you have a business page and there's not a whole lot of action on there, then it's a perfect opportunity for you to start implementing, right? Is to start just showing up and delivering. At this point, you're not worried about engagement. You know, though, that you're going to engage once somebody does leave a comment, once somebody does share. And, and actually, on that note, let me just make sure to let you guys know, when somebody shares a broadcast, so I'm going to use this as an example. When you guys share this broadcast, I hope you all know that I try my best to go through afterwards, because I try to go through all the comments and kind of catch up with you guys, even though I do it during the live. I try to do some of that afterwards. But also, there's an option to see like your, your shares. And I try to go through and comment on each person who shared the broadcast, just to let you know, like, thank you so much for doing that. There are times, though, and it's not me, where Facebook won't let me specifically see the post. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, and it's kind of frustrating when you're someone like me who wants to engage all the time. But there'll be an option where it will say in the notifications, oh, you know, Whitney and Lindsay shared this post. And when you click on that notification, it doesn't take you to these specific posts that, they're sh that they shared. Even though I know it's this video, they, they didn't, it doesn't show the individual post. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So when it does, I do comment, and I thank you, and I love you, and everything on the post, right? Um, but w sometimes I don't. So don't feel bad if, if you're like, oh, I shared this, and Ed didn't even follow up. I'm thinking of it. I Trust me, it's here. Um, yes, Chrissy, start with storytelling. Yes, 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 yes. Um, storytelling sells, you guys. That and clean packaging. Clean packaging sells too. Um, clean design comes with the packaging. Um, had to change the name of my business page uh, to make it look better in the comments. Oh yeah, there you go, uh, Mickey. Um, how to invite people in. Yeah, you uh, you just ask, you guys. You just share. And, and you ask people, um, you know, when you're um, just starting out, you just want to start sharing who you are, what you do, um, you know, go out there and just, even if it's only a couple minutes, I don't want you worried about time right now. I don't want you worried about time or the engagement part. Just know that you will do the engagement when people show up, whether it's live or afterwards um, during the replay. Ah, look at Sarah jumping on that. I love when you guys implement during the show. I love it. You guys, you guys make my day, you make my world. Um, so look, Sarah already started it right away with her business page. Boom. Um, maybe uh, they shared in Messenger. Yeah, um, there's there's Wise Eyes Creative from Mindy. Look, you guys are doing great. I love it. Um, maybe they shared in a closed group. Oh, yeah. So they could have shared um, in closed group or that's a good point or Messenger. Yeah, possibly. Notification. So you guys, real quick, when it comes to notifications on Facebook, as you probably already know, even at a personal level, let alone the business side, it is, it's sometimes a hot mess. It really is. Um, you know, somebody posted the other day, Facebook notifications, you're drunk, go home, because there'd be like five minutes, and then two hours, and then two hours, and then five minutes. Like, it was just really weird how mess messy it was. But anyway, um, just know that I try to go through as much as I can in the time that I have for you guys. Um, but what I want you to focus on right now, moving forward, what you guys are already doing, implementing, um, is your whole thing is to show up, deliver. That's the only first, those first two steps is what you have to do. That's, that's how you're going to build your credibility online is show up, deliver. Then you're going to engage whenever somebody likes, loves, comments, shares that post as much as possible, right? It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to go in and write a whole blog post to them. You literally can just say, thank you so much for watching my broadcast. I appreciate you taking the time to share this. Like, whatever it is, make it work. But your only two things to focus on is show up, deliver. That's all you need to focus on right now. Then 
you will start building up that credibility. And don't just have it in one spot. Start using it in different spots, right? If you're on different platforms, go on different platforms. See what works for you. See what works for your audience. It's all about that. Right? Uh, look at Tammy with the brand new Champion Academy. Woo! Uh, hashtag show up, deliver. Exactly. That's all you guys got to do. You know, that that's my core values is um, show up, deliver, and engage. And it works. And that's what I work with with my clients. That's what I work with, you know, with you guys. And also in my head membership community. Like, that... Those three things, they sound so simple and they are so simple once you start implementing strategies around those. So keep that in mind. Um, man, this was a good episode, huh? So if this is your first time joining, boy, I'm so glad you guys showed up today. Um, there are previous episodes as well as if you want to become a guest. So here, going back to how do you invite people in? How do you invite people in? You got to open up the doors. So Here's one for uh, for you guys to, to take and run with. So if you want to become a guest on the show and share your knowledge with my audience and um, really, you know, branch out, then afterwards you can head over to edtalktv.com and you can take a look at becoming a guest. And actually we're going to have... Um, my good friend Kate come in this week. I think it's on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I think it's email marketing. I'm really excited. She's really good. Um, so we'll talk about that kind of stuff. Um, and then I'm working on uh, getting a couple more guests. I don't know if they'll be this week, but you know, it's just always ongoing. So you have, you have to start getting comfortable first with your, in terms of your page. I want you to get comfortable with showing up and delivering and then start bringing people in to the mix and, and start doing collaborations. You guys like go out there and do collaborations like that. That's the whole thing. That's, that's what this whole thing is. This whole game, this whole business entrepreneur, um, you know, social media game, like whatever you want to call it. This whole thing is about working together. Like I always say, teamwork equals success. And it's because we have to work together in order to get to the next level. And when we get to the top, we don't want to be by ourselves. It's so fun. Nobody wants to drink by themselves. Nobody wants to party by themselves. Nobody wants to blow the little um, confetti things for New Year's by themselves. Like, who wants to do that? Nobody. Like, we all got to be together and hang out and have a good time, you know? Um, last but not least, that's why we didn't uh, show up on Friday's episode because I actually took the afternoon off and got to meet with a good group of friends who are so busy running their own business and uh, being a full-time teacher that we never really get time off together unless it's the holidays. So we were able to do it last Friday and we got to sneak away for a couple hours and it was awesome. It was just awesome and it was totally what we all needed. And so that's what you have to remember too, is you got to take breaks and, and you sometimes, you, you just got to just be like, peace, I got to go. Like it is what it is, you know, and, and just, Keep things moving. That, that's how you got to do it. So anyway, I hope you guys had a fantastic time here. I look forward to seeing you guys back here tomorrow, same time, same place. All the links you need for all the different things are in the comments. Be sure to connect with each other, and we will talk to you soon, all right? Take care.